Hey, pool guys and girls. It's been a long time since I've been on here and uploaded a video. I don't really have a good excuse for it. I've just been really busy and uh, just just busy with the pool business and busy with family and busy with life. But here I am. This is not a video about why you won't make it as a pool tech. This actually has nothing to do with that at all. I just wanted to have some type of a generic... Uh, title for the video that only pool professionals would click on. I didn't want non-pool professionals to click on this video and I definitely wouldn't want one of my customers to click on this video. That would be embarrassing. I'd probably have to delete the video if that happened. But basically what I wanted to do was just give you a sneak peek into the cells of uh, my particular business um, and kind of show you what's going on and you know, this is going to be uh, potentially um, higher or lower than where you're at, and it doesn't really matter. You know, every everybody's different. Everybody's capabilities are different. Every uh, geographic uh, region is different. There's so many variables. So there's really no reason to compare um, yourself to me or to anybody else. Um, plus, you know, not to mention, you know, when I... Uh, first started out in the business, which has been about six years ago now, I was nowhere near this. In fact, I was barely even making it. I thought, I mean, I thought I was going to have to go back to corporate America. I was basically just cutting even. I wasn't even making any money my first entire year of business. So I almost didn't even make it. I almost folded up shop and, and left. But I did stick with it, and I learned you know, every single year, and it just keeps getting better and better. And I always wanted to take a little bit of a look into somebody else's business, kind of see how they operate, how they do things, and never really had that opportunity. So so that's what I'm doing here right now, kind of giving you a little sneak peek. And I've got my QuickBooks pulled up, and I'm on my report column. This is actually a custom report that I can create and uh, it's for the last 30 days. So we'll run this report. Took out my name here because I don't want anybody identifying my business and uh, calling me up or anything like that. So as you can see, I have it broken down into two main categories. I have pool repair and pool service. And anytime I charge a customer in QuickBooks, I have to uh, say what it is. It's a pool repair, it's a filter clean, or just a regular repair work, or if it's a service, I break that down into different categories, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but anytime I charge a customer, it's going to show up on this report. So first up, we got pool repair here, we got filter cleaning. In the last 30 days, I've done uh, 35 of those for an average price of 120, basically $127 each got some of my original customers at about 115 bucks and my newer ones that I'm signing up you know more recently are at 145 and then here's my repair work and that's at four thousand five hundred fifty five dollars and uh, average price is 182 bucks so that could be anything from like an o-ring for a pump for nine bucks and it could be like a new uh, filter for two thousand um, it's anywhere in between but you can see I'm at 31% of my total revenue. And that's actually not very good. A lot of uh, industry people say you should be at about 50%. And that's when you're pushing uh, new equipment, new equipment sales. Uh, you'll be much higher there. Um, I've never been at 50% before, and I probably will never get there. And that's just a part of uh, who I am because I have uh, so much service work that I don't really have a lot of time for repair work. Um, in fact, in the queue right now, I've got an IntelliFlow shaft seal that's been approved that needs to get done. I've got a TriStar uh, motor bearings that are getting loud and squealing. So I need to have that motor rebuilt, put it back in with a new shaft seal. Um, and then I have a Superflow variable speed that needs a shaft seal. And then a few little tiny repairs like a um, you know, like real little stuff, like I've got a filter that has a drain plug that's leaking and just stupid stuff like that. But I've got a lot of repair work that's been approved already by the customer, and I just haven't had the time to do it yet. So it's hard for me to do a full equipment, you know, install. Like if i got to put in a pump or got to put in a, a new filter or, 
even worse, I got one customer right now that needs a new pad, a new ground up replumb, a new pump, and a new filter. He needs he needs everything. And to be honest, I want to do it, but I don't want to do it just because I don't have the time. And I haven't been able to find any good subcontractors. It seems like all the subcontractors are flakes. You know, it's it's I've done it so many times. It's the same old story every time. Basically, they you, know, you reach out to them, you make contact, you introduce yourself, and they want to get your work. And so they treat you like a king for the first <clears throat> one or two times, and then all of a sudden they will uh, you'll send them out to a job, and they'll no show, and then they uh, they ghost you. And uh, it's happened to me so many times. I think it's been you know six or seven times, and so I've just basically gotten to the point where I can't trust anybody, and I just do it all myself. But the, you know when I do it myself, there's only so many hours in a day, and sometimes some stuff just you know, gets pushed back. So that's one of the reasons why my repair work is not at 50%. But anyways, move it on. So I've got my my service here. And I have this categorized because I like to do that because I like to see what my averages are. So you can see I have a bi-weekly chemical service. And basically with this one, I go every other week. And I do uh, check the chemistry. And I put in the chemicals and the chlorine that's needed. And I charge $81 for that on average. And I've got 34 of those that I do. And then I've got my bi-weekly full service. So this is every other week. This would be a more of a standard full service where you brush the walls and empty the baskets and you know net the pool of debris and stuff like that. And so I've got $117.76 is my average for that one. Chemical charges. This would be things like, um, okay, so going up, so so when I have my price here uh, for service, this includes tabs and it includes anything to lower or raise the pH or alkalinity. So what this doesn't include would be things like um, phosphate remover, uh, pool shock, cyanuric acid, salt, that kind of stuff. So that's what these chemical charges are. And it's only 260 bucks because it was, you know, this is for basically since February. Uh, in the summer, this will be like $2,000. Um, but, you know, there's not much chemical getting used right now. And then pool service, this column, this is my, my like one-time service uh, catch-all category. Like if somebody says, hey, I'm, I've got a realtor coming to take pictures of my house. Can you go clean it again? Uh, you know, right before they come just so it's perfect. You know, so if it's just a one-time service for someone, then I put it under here because I don't want it to affect my other numbers. Um, but then I have my weekly full service. This is what most guys do. Uh, and I bet $157 bucks, uh, for my average there. So my total revenue, my service revenue is 20000 and my total repair is 9000 for a total of $29,000, and that's in the last 30 days. So I'm an owner operator. I don't have any employees I used to. I didn't really like that. I didn't like uh, managing people. I kind of felt like a babysitter and I don't really think I was exceptional at that. So when the last one left, I just kind of took it over myself, got rid of the lousy customers I didn't you know want to deal with anymore and just kept the good stuff and uh, went from there. So you can change this to the last year you can run that report so in the last year as an owner operator I've done $86,000 in repair work you can see that average is 27% which is quite a bit lower than the previous just the month um, of February so it's quite a bit down that kind of goes about what I was talking about earlier um, but then $36,000 in filter cleans, and this is nice because this is this is all profit. I mean, when you're doing a filter clean, there's not really any, you know, chemical. There's, I mean, you just have to buy some tools, but once you have them, you have them. It's just all labor. So that's pretty good there. And the average price is $126 bucks, uh, for a filter clean. And then going down the list, uh, the total, grand total, is $318,414. Now that's gross, that's not net profit. That's my gross revenue. And um, you could kind of figure out if you wanted to what my 
net profit would be by using industry averages, but my my business is not going to be industry average because because mostly because I have these chemical service accounts um, and these biweekly. So these are going to throw off the averages. I think I think most guys say about twenty percent of your uh, gross will be expenses and eighty percent will be profit. That would put me at let's see three hundred eighteen thousand four hundred fourteen times 0.8 for 80%, 250, $254,000. I did not make that much money. I'm not going to actually tell you how much money I made net profit, but I can tell you it's a lot of money. Uh, it's a good income, especially for a field that requires no college education. Um, you know, I actually went to school. I have a, I have a master's degree, and I paid a lot of money for it, and I don't even use it because I'm a pool guy and I make more money now as a pool guy than I could have made and I, I as I did make in my old job before I got into the pool industry and if I could go back in time I wish I could you know do things different and not get it because it was expensive but I can't it it is what it is I have it and you just have to you know move forward but you know the fact that you can make a pretty reasonable income without a degree is nice to know and that's one of the reasons why I'm sharing this this uh, video anyways I wanted to just give a couple uh, pieces of quick advice before I head out I'm definitely not a know-it-all there's a lot that I'm still learning in this industry um, in fact I barely made it my first year in business I I just basically cut even I didn't make any profit I thought I was gonna have to go back to corporate America and I was going to fold up shop and, and I was going to fail. But I stuck with it. I kept going and every year got easier. Every year got better. Every year got more profitable. And uh, every year um, just it just gets better and better. And I'm six years into this now. And there's a few things that I could offer as advice to others that are you know, on this journey to help them out. And you know, the first thing that I would say is you always have to be uh, pursuing new pools. I had a pool guy friend of mine one time tell me that he needs another pool like he needs a hole in his head and basically he was just too busy kind of like where I'm at now but he didn't even want another customer but his prices were basically just average um, you know when I say average I just mean like to the area here our, our geographical region his prices were just average and really, he does need new customers because every pool route, especially an owner-operator route, has a bottom, you know, five or ten percent of customers that are lower paying, you know, they're lower priced or they're they're harder pools. They take more time to manage, or they're just constantly problem pools, or they have you know ten kids and three dogs, and you're literally putting in more phosphate remover than chlorine. You know, every pool route has those types of pools that you want to get rid of. And you should always be bringing on new customers uh, to replace them. And that's pretty self-explanatory. But in addition to that, when you get busy and you no longer have time for a new customer, your price needs to go up. Now, I raise my prices every year for my customers, but I do so slowly. You know, I might do it 10 bucks a year or whatever. But when I have a new person that inquires, I quote them a lot higher than average for our area. And it's because I'm busy. I don't have the time to take on a new pool. So if they want me to take them on, they have to be willing to pay. And, you know, I'll quote them. Like right now I'm quoting $180, $200 a month. You can see my average here. I mean, I've got one guy that I know is $125. He's got a salt pool. And uh, he's one of my first customers. And so he's kind of low. But I'm not going to bring somebody on for 125 bucks now. No way. It's not going to happen. I don't have enough time in the day. So I'm going to be quoting 180 to 200 bucks, And that's fine. If they don't want to take it, they can find somebody else. But if they do want to take it, then I can go through my customers and I can say, okay, who can I uh, get rid of now that I don't need anymore? And then another thing that I would say is, you know, I've when you're an owner-operator, you only have so many hours in the day then you have to be able to make as much money as you possibly can in that amount of hours 
And when you think about it that way, you have to look at it and say, what am I doing that is not making money? You know, how many times are you answering the phone and taking like questions and calls from customers? You're not billing them for a phone call. You're not a lawyer. You know, how many times are you getting new credit card information because their credit card got declined because it's expired? You know, you're not getting paid for that. How many times are you going down to the pool shop to get parts and chemical? You're not getting paid for that. You know, you have to look at that stuff and you have to say, where can I, you know, tighten up? And, you know, a couple of things that I've done as far as tightening up, you know, these filter cleans, I've, I've got some friends that they do all their filter cleans on one day of the week. They might do them on Friday. But to me, that makes no sense. I mean, as busy as I am, I might do 24, 25 pulls in a day. I'm still going to do two filter cleans a day and I'm going to do them on the route because I don't want to have to drive to that pool a second time this week. I'm not getting paid to drive to their pool. I'm getting paid to clean the filter. So why would I drive there again if I'm already going to be there servicing the pool earlier in the week? I'm going to take the filter apart and clean it there. Why would I do it again later? It makes no sense to me, but some guys do that. Another thing I do is, as far as getting my chemicals and supplies, I've developed a relationship with one of the distributors in town here. And I don't go to the pool store anymore. I can't remember. It's probably been over a year since I've been into the pool supply shop. Because I get everything over the phone. And you might think that I'm not saving a lot of time, but I am. Because I used to go to the, the supply shop once a week. Sometimes twice a week if I had something urgent that had to get repaired. And... You know, I would go in there, it might be five minutes off the route, or it might be even on the route, but there's two people in front of me in line, so it's a 10-minute wait, and then I get up to the counter, and it's 15 minutes at the counter. You know, finally got all my stuff. I'm 20 minutes, 30 minutes into it. And if you do that once or twice a week, you know, that's that's 30 minutes to an hour when you could be making money, but you're not making money because you're at the counter of the pool shop. So what I've done is I've developed a relationship with just one of them. I like to use one because when they call, they know who I am. And they literally answer the phone, hey, Ryan, what can I get you? And they know where I live. They, they, I have a locked gate that they can go through. They have the code. And they literally will uh, basically take a list from me. And I'll tell them everything I need. And they'll deliver it to my house the next day and, and lock it up for me. And, you know, occasionally they might give me the wrong part or whatever and I might have to go to the pool shop like once a year, but it doesn't happen a lot, and I've saved a lot of time doing that. You know, they have a guy that they pay to deliver supplies and put them behind my locked gate. So why would I go do it? Why would I go put them behind my locked gate when they can do it for me? If it's something you're doing and you're not making revenue from it, you got to think about how you can change it so you can maximize the amount of revenue you're making. This might sound weird, guys, but when I first started, when I first started in the business, I would pee three or four times a day, and I would go drive to a gas station to go pee. I don't do that anymore. I pee in a freaking cup in my truck, and I pour it out the window. I haven't been to a gas station for two years. I mean, I go to get gas, but I don't go in. I'm not getting paid to drive five or ten minutes off the route to go pee so I'm not gonna do it got dark windows and I go in a spot where there's no one around and there's people who live in their cars because they're homeless what do you think they're doing they're peeing in a cup and I got this big old 44 ounce cup that I can't fill up and I pee in it and then I drive away as I pour it out the window and that one thing alone right there saves me an hour and a half a week. It really does. It sounds stupid, but it does. All right, guys, I'm coming to an end here. I don't really have anything else to say, but if there's anything you guys want to see, let me know. Reach out. Put it in the comments below. I don't really have a whole lot of time anymore, as you can tell. That's kind of one of the reasons why I haven't been posting on this channel. This channel actually started when I had text, and I was using it to teach my text, and I just got, you know, kind of sick and tired of, you know, you know, doing the same thing over and over with every single text. I just would make a video, and then as soon as they'd ask me a question, I'd just shoot them the video. But pretty much taking all those videos down. Um, but uh, I don't really have a, a use for 
the channel anymore. Um, it doesn't really, you know, benefit me in any way, but uh, it's still fun to interact with some of you guys, so I still leave it up. But comment below if you have anything you want to see or if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys later.